Okay, so what are the topics that we will be covering in this uh, training uh, as we move on? Well, just like you see on the flyer, uh, stated on the flyer, we will get a deep dive into uh, SSIS, how to build it from scratch, right? Um, and to go all the way to building a simple package, uh, deploying that package, and managing that package. <clears throat> we will go as far as that. Then uh, we will also look into SSRS, right? <clears throat> how to configure that, how to manage it, how to uh, build scale up deployments, build reports, SSRS reports, manage them, migrate them from servers to servers. So um, I know some of you might be here, you've not taken my training, in the past, but we do, when we start getting to those migration, I will need you guys to use virtual machines, right? To be able to move from one server to another. So uh, so, uh, so that is that is how we will, we will do that. Obviously, uh, we are also going to look at a basic introduction of uh, Microsoft Azure. Is a whole training that we offer at Kia we take, but for this, in order for you to not to be completely blank in, in your interviews, we actually give you at least an introduction to uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, this introduction goes all the way to doing uh, simple migrations uh, from on-prems to Azure, from Azure back to on-prem into different virtual machines and to Azure databases. Very basic, not really going in so much detail into that. We will talk about that. Uh, the last thing that I want to also talk about is for you guys is uh, mm -hmm. having a rundown into uh, monitoring tools out there. I'll give you a rundown on monitoring tools, but we are going to the practical part. I may do two. I, I'll choose two monitoring tools, uh, external monitoring tools that exist out there. We will download the demo, the, the evaluation wow. edition. Uh, for those tools, and then we will. I will teach you how to configure it. Right. Uh, this has been a project that I've worked on on so many different environments on how you can configure SSIS tool, uh, how you can <clears throat> literally uh, set it up and use it uh, for your environment. Right. So those are the things plus the other extra tips that I will be giving you uh, in these classes. We will always record the classes. And I will have these classes uh, uploaded on our YouTube channel. So uh, this will not be uploaded in any uh, Google Drive. We will have these classes uploaded on our YouTube channel. And anybody can go on our YouTube channel and watch the video and uh, uh, get more meaningful insight into that. All right. So that's that's what we plan to cover. All right. Let me give room for questions. And then we can start. Any question? Yes, I have a question. Yeah, so let me let me just uh, before we start into those questions, uh, just so that we keep some some order in class and be much organized, I will strongly discourage Coro's answers, right? Or abruptly interrupting and just talking over uh, each other. So every time you have a question, please raise your hand, right? Raise your hand, and I will always call you to ask your question. I I will really not appreciate people just openly asking their questions like that with that. It's just like you're skipping a queue in, in everywhere you go to, right? So if someone is raising their hand to ask a question and you just blindly ask us, uh, that is that is a little bit not professional. So let's let's just keep that approach. Just raise your hand each time you have a question. The only time I will require you to just scream and talk without even raising your hand is if I'm supposed to record this class and I'm not recording, right? I missed it. Please don't wait by raising your hand, just say it out loud, and then I will give you a chance to do that. So, all right, Ehi, let me start with you first. What's your question? Yeah, thank you. Um, it's regarding the monitoring tools. Um, I know you said you're gonna do, uh, you're gonna look at two, but are we, like, can we suggest, is that okay, or you're just gonna randomly pick the two that you'll be talking about? Um. Well, I can I take suggestion and I see if it's within the capacity of this class. You would did you want to suggest a monitor tool? 
Yeah, DPA. DPA. Okay. Uh, well, one of the tools that we are going to use is uh, we're going to uh, do a demo on will be Century One. And Century One is owned by uh, SolarWinds, which is also which also owns a DPA. Okay. Right. Um, we can look into that. Uh, the tools that I actually had in mind uh, for the demo part is Century One and uh, Redgate. I, those are the two tools, but I can take a look into that. But what, like I said, all these tools have the same functionality, practically. So if you learn one, you obviously will know how the other one functions, right? So, all right. So we will see as time goes on, really depends on time. We can look more, see more into that. Depends on how many questions you guys have as well. All right. Okay. Any question before we move on? Any question? All right. So, uh, so you have to be on the lookout. This class doesn't have any WhatsApp group, and I don't intend to create any WhatsApp group for this class. So, uh, so you have to constantly check uh, if we have to organize any extra class in addition to what is already listed on the flyer. I will always post it on my ch my uh, channel. You can look it up on our WhatsApp channel as well as in our uh, social media platforms. We will have that listed there so that you can attain. And every single time we will send the link out there. So we will not create any WhatsApp group for this class. Once the session is over, it's over, right? So that is how we're going to run it. Okay. Uh, yes, Grace, you have a question? Yes, uh, good morning. Good for morning. My time. I just wanted to find out for in order to take the Azure Cloud Computing, the time does not favor me here in Arizona since we are three hours behind, both the three times that we put there. So how then do I get to attend those classes? Because I really want to take for the batch that is coming up. Uh the time, the time for the real Azure class, not the not this the real Azure classes. Yes, the tweet that I put there that I saw does not favor me at all for any well, of them. Are you talking about the flyer for these free classes? Um, no, the flyer for these free classes is just introduction to Azure. I mean, the real Azure class itself that is coming of the orientation. Oh, okay. yeah, okay, yes. I said the three times that we put there does not favor me. I'll be in the office because I work in the office. so. It does okay. not we we are we are we have not finally concluded. I mean, we just had a orientation today. We have we are there. See some minor changes that we're going to make as far as the schedule is concerned. But unfortunately, if the final schedule comes out and it really doesn't favor you, it's difficult to actually accommodate everybody. I mean, there is a class on Saturday, right? Um, which I'm obviously I'm expecting that you are not working on Saturday um so yeah. yeah so for now the classes that we have if you i mean i've had people that have taken this training all the way to the end by just participating in one of the the sessions and missing out one so if you happen to find yourself in that category you can still do the session successfully but it's difficult to have individual i mean it's difficult to please everybody you know in terms of this, the timing all right okay okay Thank you. Good. All right. So um, for this, we have a lot of tools that we will be downloaded. That takes quite some time. Um, and it, it needs you guys to do it effectively. Uh, so that's why uh, I will start off by having those. Uh, I will start this class by having the, the, the software that we'll be needing for this training downloaded. And then from there, we will eventually move on into that, right? So um, for the, the SSIS training that we will be doing, we're going to be using uh, Visual Studio, right? Uh, Visual Studio will be the, the GUI uh, that we're going to use for, for this tr training. And, um, and because the configuration takes, it's a little bit tricky if you don't do it right. I had thought about sending it out there for you guys to do it before class. But I remember from the last class, there was a lot of issues on that. Like I said, this is going to be a practical class. So we're going to start up today, uh, first of all, by just downloading the software. 
All right. And then we're going to use the software and start going step by step into the configuration and making sure that all of us, we have that up and running and ready for the class. All right. So if there's no question, I will share my screen and then we'll move on from there. Any, any last question? Any? Yes, uh, Sylvain. Yes, sir. just one question here. I have uh, some VMs on my host computer here. Are we going to do it on our uh, VMs or are we going to be doing it on the instance that we have on our host computer? Uh, well, the, we will do for this Visual Studio. I will I will prefer we do it on our host computers for now. Uh, eventually, when we are dealing with uh, SSIS migration uh, uh, and SSIS migration, I will need us to uh, do that on our virtual machine. So now we don't need those VMs for now. So you can keep them for now. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Very good. All right. So let me. Okay. So guys, just give me one minute. Let me grab something and then I will be right back. Going to be born. We have been talking about extending our training, not just to train and place people out there, but to actually be able to train, get the people recruited, help them also navigate the job market as well as execute those contracts. And Opte Consulting Firm is all about that. Under this umbrella, which is a sister organization of Chaotic IT Academy, our goal is to train our trainees, mentor them, get them to the job market, and still be able to give them the maximum support that they deserve to be very successful in this job market. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been talking about this hub. This hub is going to be presenting a few more things, more services. And some of the services that we are going to be providing here at this hub is we are giving you a co-working Hold on, guys. I feel like there's some lacking on the video. The video is lagging. Give me one minute. Sorry. Welcome to Optech Consulting Firm, a place where ideas are going to be born. Over the years, we have been talking about extending our training, not just to train and place people out there, but to actually be able to train, get the people recruited, and help them also navigate the job market as well as execute those contracts. And Opte Consulting Firm is all about that. Under this umbrella, which is a sister organization of Chaotic IT Academy, our goal is to train our trainees, mentor them, get them to the job market, and still be able to give them the maximum support that they deserve to be very successful in this job market. Well, we've been talking about this hub. This hub is going to be presenting a few more things, more services. And some of the services that we are going to be providing here at this hub is we are giving you a co-working experience. Some of you are working from home. Sometimes you need environment where you're able to network with the right people, people who, are, who speak the same language. You want to also get out there from your home and sit somewhere in a clean, good environment and be able to do your work. We are also offering that. We do have working spaces where you are able to come in here fully equipped and be able to do your work Monday through Friday. This is also going to be an incubator. For over the years, we've been talking about actually getting into consultancy, be able to get all those contracts and execute them with your support. So with this hub, we are going to nurture all those ideas and be able to be one step forward towards realizing this consultancy dream that we all talked about. Optech Consulting Firm is located in Stafford, Texas. And uh, we do have uh, branches in Moliko, Buya, Cameroon, and another office in Ludwig Southern in Germany. Those are all the locations where we will be operating and servicing 
all our clients and providing support for all of our students. One of the most important services that Optech Consulting Firm actually offers is profile marketing. We know once you're done with your training, it's really difficult to get a job. The market is highly competitive. So what we've actually done is that we have studied the market and we understand exactly what recruiters are looking for and we are going to take that responsibility off you. One of the reasons why students don't have jobs when they finish the training is that they don't have the time to sit down and apply for work. They don't have the time to follow up with applications. They don't have the time to literally be aggressive in the job search. We are taking that away from you and we are offering you profile marketing. We are going to place you with the right people, guarantee a very return, a fast return of investment of whatever amount you are investing. Because we are going to make sure that you get to the job market as soon as possible. It really doesn't matter where you did your training. It really doesn't matter what field you studied. So long as it's IT related, we have you covered. All right. And again, sorry for the video that was a little bit lagging. I will share that once more so you can watch it uh, in YouTube. I, I saw that there was some lag. I just had to allow you to play. But I, got, I hope you guys got the sound. The sound wasn't lagging. Uh, and uh, these are some of the services that we offer here at Optech. And uh, feel free to take advantage of all this. Uh, we are constantly looking forward to helping you make sure that you get the right uh, uh, from the IT field. So, all right, we're getting started. We're going straight. And the first thing that I want us to do is I want us to download some of the tools that we're going to be using in this class, right? The first thing I want us to download, like I said, guys, this is not a webinar. Uh, it is a practical class, so you have to join this class ready to participate and do what we ask you to do. If you are here and your goal is just to watch, I think that you will spend your time wisely watching a YouTube video out there rather than being here in class with us. All right. Okay. So the first thing I want us to download is for the SSIS training, we're going to be using Visual Studio, right? Zeps, can you please mute some of these people for me? Okay, let me log in as many calls. All right, please, let me make you call so you can mute. I'm going to mute, first of all, mute everybody. So we have a clean class and I'll mute the co-host so you can mute some of these people for me, please. All right, so I've met a few people here, co-hosts. Please help me when someone on mute. So, so we have... Um, we don't have all these interruptions. So I'm muting everybody. Right now, you are all muted. Please, if you have a question, if I'm explaining, you have a question. It's hard. I've muted everybody. How come this person just unmute? Mute. All right, good. You can put your question in the chat. That will help. Maybe, Doctor, I may suggest that if you don't want anybody to unmute, you can set it in the way that, because people keep on unmuting, unmuting, set in the way that you are the one to accept. That All right, I'll do that. Yes. Okay, now nobody can unmute. When it's time to ask questions, I will give you a chance to unmute yourself. Right now, but you have a chance to ask your questions directly on the chat, uh, using the chat, I will, I will pay attention to that, but when it's time for questions, I will give you a chance to unmute yourself. All right, so I was saying the first thing that I want us to download on this training for the, the first phase, which is really getting an introduction to SSIs, learning how uh, to use this SSIs for our workload as a production uh, support DBA is use Visual Studio. And Visual Studio has different editions, right? We have the community edition, which is an open source. That's what we're going to be using for this training. Uh, we have the professional and the enterprise edition, right? So these ones are there. If you want to really leverage the full features, uh, you can use a free trial for a couple of days, but this class goes a couple of days, more than a couple of days. So I'll need all of us to download the community edition uh, of the Visual Studio. That's what we're going to be doing. So let me share this link here on the chart for all of you. But if you just click online and then just go ahead and click download, right? Right, just click download. It will take very short time to download. You can see mine is already done downloading. So I will share this link here in the, in, the Zoom, in the Zoom chat for all of you to click on it and download. All right. 
chat. Okay. All right, the link is on the Zoom chat. I need everybody to go ahead and download that, that software. All right. So uh, there are a lot of different videos that you can also watch online if you want to learn more on Visual Studio. Uh, so another thing that I want us to look at to download, another tool that you guys need quite a lot is a Visual Studio Code, right? Visual Studio Code, you can use Windows or Mac, MacBook for this download, right? There's also a free download just below the same link. You have Visual Studio Code that I need you guys to go ahead and download. So let's download it. If you click on download, you have to choose whether you're using Mac or Windows. So I'm going to go with the Windows download and then I'll download the download it as well. So that one takes quite some time to download. So if you're having difficulties or any challenge, just post it here on the chat, please. I will be reading the chat uh, as we move on with this training. Okay. While you're waiting for the, the Visual Studio code to download, I think the first link should go very fast, Visual Studio. Uh, you should be able to see it already downloaded. So if I go on my downloads folder, I should be able to see there uh, the installer. So we're going to go ahead and run it and install it. So I'll just double click on that and it extracts it. Yes, install, yes, I want to install Visual Studio. All right, before you get started, we need to set up a few things so that you can configure your installation. All right, we'll click on next and you start installing. <clears throat> Guys, it's very, very important that you don't miss this class, this particular one right now, okay? Because everything that we're going to do depends on you having a successful installation. If you missed it, well, I think you can only come back next time we offer these trainings uh, to be able to do that. Kindly paste the second link. No, the second link is right below the first link. So if you click on the download for the Visual Studio, if you open that link, the first thing you download is the Visual Studio 2022, the Community Edition, you click on download, and then just scroll down a little bit. At the bottom of it, you have Visual Studio Code. All right, just click on download and select what operating system you have and download it. All right, you have a question, use the chat, and then I will I will always address your question. Okay, I will hold on a little bit for everybody to download and we get here. Like I mentioned, this class is not a webinar, okay? It's a webinar, I'm just going to teach and then you take note, but this is a practical class. I need everybody that is here to participate. <clears throat> so when you start the installation, there are a couple of things that you see here. Um, you have uh, a lot of different web and cloud-based tools that you can use. You can use this Visual Studio to download. For example, uh, ASP.NET and web development, Azure development packages that you can download. You have um, mobile development, C++, C Sharp, uh, Visual Studio, Linux, embedded content that you can download, right? Those are things that come along with this. I can't find the link to the code. Let me say, let me Let me send the link again. I did mention that the link is right. Let me, if you just join it, the link that I'm sending right now, it's right below it, All right? So I'll put the link one more time in class. That's the link. If you click on that link, like I just clicked on it, for example, see, I clicked on it. You see the first thing that you're downloading here is the Visual Studio 2022. You are downloading the community edition, except you have a license key for the professional or the enterprise, right? If not, download the community edition. And then you scroll down a little bit, just below it, you have a Visual Studio code. Just click on it and download. And then 
leave that one for now. Don't install it, just download it and keep it. We'll come back to that one later on. But for now, I want us to complete the installation for Visual Studio. That's what we're going to be using throughout this class. All right, so um, we're downloading the community edition, install while downloading. It, it, it will require roughly 1.2 gigabyte for this Visual Studio to be installed. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on install. And do you want to continue with that workload? Yes, let's just continue installing. And it may take some time depending on the your internet speed it may take some time for this to download. All right, so I'll pause the recording here and answer some questions. One, unmute. Now you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Yes, any question? Any question or any challenge? When I click on it, it gives more option. Which one should I choose? You're choosing, depending mm -hmm. on your operating system for your computer, you are choosing that, right? It's either the Windows or Mac. Those are the two most favorable ones that you're going to download. Uh, okay. Doc, yes, yes, I have a question. When you get to the interface where you have the Azure development, Python development, and all at the that. Bottom, we at just the bottom, go ahead and install. Yes, yeah, at the bottom, bottom right corner, it says install while downloaded. So it will be downloading and doing the installation at the same time. Okay. Thank you, sir. Right. Okay. All right. I have a question, please. Yes, Julius. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, I am now. I see workloads. I don't know how to where to go from there. A uh, workload because I, I see installing community uh, studio community Visual Studio community twenty twenty two seventeen point seven six on the bottom right then, corner. Uh, it's share your screen. Let me see what the problem is. Okay. Share screen. What's happening to this thing? Let's see. Okay, so share screen. Mm. Can you see my screen? You on okay, it's coming up. Yeah, so on the right bottom right, like I said, you just click on install. Right on the bottom right corner of your screen. You are not going to add any of those components for now. Just install the Visual Studio. We're going to add the component later on. So on the bottom right corner of your screen, just click on install here. Oh, okay. Let's see. Install while downloading. Click on install, please, and just install it. Just click on install. Well, I can see. Stop sharing and you will see it. There's an install right after that icon. You'll see oh. it's all there. Okay. All Thank right. you. All right. So right now, mm -hmm. my installation is completed. You can clearly see uh, installation completed, the, the installation completed. All right, so when it, it completes, it will require to sign into Visual Studio or create an account or skip it for now, right? Uh, if you wanted to collaborate uh, with in real time with Azure services, you can sign into an Azure account or you can, if you don't have an Azure account, you can skip this uh, for now, right? 
and then just go ahead and, and click start a uh, visual studio i know my system might be fast than the other people in class so i'm, I'm going to be a little bit slow especially uh the for the first phase here Yes, the video will be uploaded on our YouTube channel and you can uh, watch it and then do the, the practical part, right? We'll upload the video on our YouTube channel. All right. So I'm going quite slow because this is the installation phase. I want everybody to do it right. So if you have a question, please use the chat. Just ask your question and I will address it immediately, please. Just use the chat, ask your question, and I will address it immediately. Uh, I can't find the install tab. No, the install tab is on the bottom right corner of your screen. Uh, no, Sandra, can you share your screen? One more time. Let me do it one more time before we proceed. Go ahead and share your screen. Sandra, please, can you share your screen? Okay, so this is, the, you're still on the website. Where is the, the download that you downloaded? Is that a second download or the first download? This one is a Visual Studio code. Where's the first download? Go on your download folder. Go on your download folder in your computer. Um, well, it looks like you haven't downloaded the Visual Studio. You're downloading the Visual Studio code, which takes longer. Go back to the link, the first link that I sent to you on this first link. The first link, that's the second link. That one is Visual Studio Code. Go on the first tab, this other tab. This tab. Yes. Did you download this? Scroll down a little bit. Did you download this community edition? No, 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 hold on. This community, not the Visual Studio Code. Did you download that? Uh, I don't forgot that you are you are muted. Unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. That is you. That's thanks for downloading. Okay. No, I didn't. You didn't. That's the first link you were supposed to download. Now go to your download folder and let's see. Okay. Can you go to your download folder, please? Okay, that is it. Visual Studio setup. Click on that. Continue. Okay, so that will take some time to download depending on your internet speed. When it's done downloading, there will be an installation to go through. Let me know if you get stuck, put your question on the chat and then I can help you address that, okay? Okay, sir, thank you. All right. We good? Right? We good? All right. Perfect. Yes. I want to go slow to make sure that everybody has it done correctly because so once you get here, let me close this. So once you're done installing it, it says install Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition. 
You can just go ahead and click launch and it will launch the Visual Studio. Right? When you launch it, you'll find yourself on this page here. Uh, Visual Studio 2022. Uh, as you see, use Visual Studio, any project folders or file that you open will show up here for quick access. Yeah. So Visual Studio all works on. We can start off by we can clone a repository, right? And repositories from uh, you can cl clone a code online on repositories like GitHub or Azure DevOps, right? You can clone that. Uh, which has an existing project and packages, and we were able to use that to develop on that. You can also open a new project or solution, right? Every Visual Studio that we install, that we create, uh, uh, sorry, every SSIS package that you create, you have an SSIS solution, which always end with .sln file, right? So those are the solution, and those solutions have all the packages that you will be working on, right? So if we had a solution, we can actually just open the solution right now and go ahead and do it. You can also open a folder uh, that has uh, codes and use it, or you can create a brand new project, right? And so uh, choose a project template with code scaffolding to get started. Right now, we don't have any of this. So we're going to continue without a code because we have other stuff that we need to get. So you click on continue without code. And the interface launches, right? That is the interface of Visual Studio for all your SSIs deployments, right? But right now, we are database administrators. At least that is what this program is all about, right? It's for data professionals. So we are going to be developing packages, mostly data-related packages. So therefore, we need extensions that help us to build database projects, right? So up here, where you have extensions, you can click on extension and click on manage extensions. Click on it. And then they give you a whole lot of different extension or different programs that projects that you can uh, use this Visual Studio for, right? That's just a lot out there that you can use it for, right? But um, we are going to, you can see here a Visual Studio installer. This is what we just installed already. We already have this installer. Um, you can see here, this is exactly what we're looking for. SQL Server Integration Services Project. We need that because we are going to be building SSIS projects, right? So we need th this extension to be able to use this SSIS successfully. So this takes quite some time to download. So we click on it and you click on download. And it will take you to a link or obviously just go ahead and download it. Uh, so mine will take roughly six, seven minutes to download. So I'm going to pause the video here and wait for it to download while we come back to it. So I'll pause the video. Just that the code in a community edition, you would not want to use code built from a community edition in your real production workload. Companies will not want to trust that. So they want to really go with something that's fully supported and uh, by Microsoft. Okay, so once I download it, you can see it here, guys. Uh, Visual Studio, Microsoft Data Integration Services. So we're going to do double click on it. Let's install it. And we are installing the English version. Click OK. And uh, click Next. It tells you that there are some programs that need to be uh, installed. The Visual Studio Community Edition is what we need. Install. And you need to close all these programs before you all these Visual Studios, you need to close them before you can continue. So close this. And then also close this. Uh, close this one as well. Everything Visual Studio will have to be closed before they can. you can continue. This one as well needs to close. So close this. All right. Now I can try it again. Install.
install. Uh, please close the following program. Microsoft Hub Controller. Hold on. What is it in my here? You know what? Let me first just close this now and make sure that nothing is running. And then I do it again. Double click. Yes. Next, install. Yeah. Next. Watson. I mean, why is what is still rolling behind here? Let me close some of this. Close. Close this. We close this. Close. This program seems to be very sensitive, so I need me to close a couple of things. So install. Perf Watson two. All right. You know what? Let me check that on the task manager. Let's complain about the program called Perf Watson 2. Let me make sure that program is closed. It's on P or PQR. Anyone's having that issue as well? So I have the same issue. So sometimes I, I, in the past, I've had this issue where literally I have to restart. I have to restart my system before I can do the installation. So guys, if you're in class and you're having that, uh, the person that had that issue, can you just restart your computer briefly? And let me see if it's going to solve the problem. Um, and before you do- Yeah, mine worked. You restarted your computer and it worked? No, no. I just closed the programs that I had open. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right. So let me just restart your computer, guys, and try it again. Or close most of the program that you have open. And uh, just make sure that you have... Uh, let me close this one as well. Close this. Close this, close. Okay, there's also this guy here, close. And uh, close. All right, just go ahead and close it and try it again, let's see. Can you stop recording? Very good. So this, this is a whole project at work, right? Just like for those who have taken my SQL Server training, installation of SQL Server is a whole project, right? So you may be given that project to set up the SSRS environment. And this, the approach is nothing different than what I'm showing you right now already. So you will have to go make sure download Visual Studio, make sure you get a SQL Server Integration Services project downloaded. You install it, 
and then you may once you've done the installation then you can then start effectively learning how to build your packages right so this is the approach i want everybody to make sure you have this done correctly so that you're able to deploy your packages any question up to this point any question anybody has any question If you close all your programs and you're still having difficulties, just restart your entire computer. All the programs will be restarted, will be closed, and then you can run the, the, the installation again one more time. All right, so the installation is done, right? So we're going to go ahead and close this. And uh, let me move some files here, guys. I want to move some files here to create some space in my computer. running seriously out of dick space with all these installations. Okay. All right. So once that is complete, we can now come back here and launch Visual Studio. Visual Studio. Right? Make sure you log in the right one. Visual Studio 2022. Click on it. I love the way the guys have changed it. Looks beautiful. The interface looks really nice now compared to the previous versions. So it looks like a computer is running out of space. It is. That's why I'm, I'm moving some files away. All right. Now we're here on Visual Studio. Once it pops up, we are ready to start our work. That completes the setup of the environment. As far as Visual Studio is concerned, we have successfully completed the setup and we can now start doing whatever we want to do. Okay. So I need everybody to, once you're done with the installation, make sure you launch Visual Studio, and then you can see yourself right there like this, and we can start. All right. Move some files. I need to clean, clean up this computer to get some space. All these Zoom classes have taken all my space. All right, okay, so let's go ahead. Stop here. So all you need to do is go here on your uh, bottom screen here and type Visual Studio. I'll select this Visual Studio 2022, launch it, and you should find yourself on a screen like this, black screen with nothing on it. All right. Okay, now, what are we going to be doing? I mean, what exactly we're trying to do here, right? So this is really like a brief introduction to what SSIS is all about, right? Now, SSIS, which stands for SQL Server Integration Services, well, it's a fundamental building block into building packages in the real corporate world. Now, SSIS will rely on the so-called ETL, and ETL will stand for extract, transform, and load, right? In, in a corporate world, data will not always come in the form of um, a structure data. Uh, you will have data in several different forms. The data may come in as a form of uh, Excel sheet. It may come in the form of uh, 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 a SQL server. Maybe you need to move the data from one SQL server to another. You want to move the data from a, uh, a, a, an Excel sheet into SQL server, from SQL server to Excel sheet. All these different versions which you have data will need to be consolidated. And SSIS is really the tool that you can do that. You can build SSIS packages to do all kinds of things. You have backup and restore processes. You are your you are, you are, uh, data transformation packages. So extract just in the medium of putting data out of so many different sources, right? Maybe you have data from sales department, CRM, HR, 
and so on. This data is coming into different sources. So I'm extracting the data there. Now, when I extract this data, I need to load this data into a centralized database. Maybe the, because the way the data is, it has different format. I need to transform the data. So the T on the ETL is the transformation phase, which is more regarded as a staging phase where you transform the data. Once the data has been transformed into a, an acceptable format, you now load it into that, onto, onto a central database, right? Sometimes this could be a data warehouse. It could be maybe during election where data is coming from different pooling station and we need to now put the data into the right format. For example, uh, let's say you have sales agent that go out there and then they get information from customers and they have to fill a form. Probably when they fill a form, uh, they could be that when they ask for the state, instead of writing Texas, some people write TX, some people write Texas completely. You know, During the transformation phase, you may want to have some uniformity of data so that all states will be TX or all written as TA, uh, Texas in full. So during that transformation phase, you may want to clean, do some massaging, cleaning up of data, and then load the data into a centralized format where we can now use it. This is exactly what... SSI is all about, right? Extracting data from different sources, transforming the data, and then loading it somewhere else. That's all. And then the process completes there. Now, this data, why do we use SSI? Because data is always in different format. I could have data from SQL Server, from DB2, from Oracle, or from an Excel file, CSV file. And this data will be uh, transformed uh, in, in, in the middle and then load into a, a data warehouse, right? So, so this is really the fundamental building blocks, right? Uh, we integrate all the different variety of sources. We build some form of transformation, and then we, we clean the data and we load it somewhere else, right? Now, of course, example here, I have a data quality problem when loading data from different customers. Sometimes maybe a customer fills the data instead of writing Florida, write FL, or some will fill Florida as FLA or some will write it as Florida completely, right? Now, how do you consolidate this kind of data to have the uniform data? Is the transformation phase uh, that helps you in that, right? So SSI's data flow will help you clean this data. Now, a quick review. What does ETL stands for? I just give an answer. What does ETL stand for? Extract. Uh, uh, a. Uh, load. 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 Extract. Just extract. Read. Put your hands in the chat. Extract, transform, load. Yeah, B. I heard some people say A, B, D, C. No, it's D. Extract, transform, load. Extract, transform, load. All right. Okay. It's extract, transform, load, right? It's D. I, that's what SSI stands for. Okay. The answer is D. Okay. Now, when you come to SSIs, you have to have some certain terminology that you should get acquainted with. First of all, what is a package? What is a connection manager? What is the connection flow? Task, precedent, data flow, transformation, event handler. What are all these different terminologies that we will be dealing with? Now, a package in SSIS, right, is a unit of work, right? Any development that you do within SSIS constitute what is called a package. So we are going to be building SSIS packages in this program. That's what we're going to be doing, building SSIS packages. Now, these packages, I've just showed you an example here where data is coming from different sources. Those different sources where the data comes from, where you're extracting data, you need to be able to establish a connection to those different sources. When that establishment of connection is done, we call it a connection manager. You use a connection manager to establish a connection to maybe to an Excel sheet, to an Oracle server, to a DB2, to a SQL server, all those are called connection managers, right? So stores connection strings of information that you use to establish connection to that. Now, your next thing that you're going to talk about is data flow, data flow. Now in every SSIH package, the way data moves from the way it was attracted to the way it's transformed and load is controlled by what is called a control flow. Right, so the common the component of SSIS package that control the order of operations, right? In SSIS package is called a control flow, and in SSIS package, every single thing we do constitute a task. For example, if my first task is establish a connection to SQL Server, yes, I create a connection manager and makes the connection. That is a task. 
Now that task, maybe you have to use the connection and then connect, uh, maybe massage the data a little bit in the integration phase, that is another task. And then uh, establish another connection to the destination source, maybe from another SQL server to another SQL server. So these were three different tasks. Connection on the source, transforming tasks, and then destination, right? Those are different tasks. And now in this exercise, every single movement of data is called, has what is called a precedence, a precedence, right? Every SSIS package, will you have to tell SSIS, how is this data moving? Is moving from this point to this point to this point to this point. All these ones here are part of data flow that directs the movement of data from one point to another, right? Right. So uh, the data flow itself is a task that coordinates data movement and the transformation, right? So the control flow tells you how the data is moving, and the data flow shows you how the data is moving. And the transformation is just the task within the data flow that, that you apply if you need to do some form of transformation. It is not in every single SSIS package that you build that you need to transform data. If I'm moving data from SQL Server to SQL Server, there's no transformation needed, right? If I'm moving data to Excel to SQL Server and I need to massage it, there may be some level of transformation. And within the whole process, we have what we call event handler. This is what tells you what is going on within the SIS. Is it failing? Is it working? And so on, right? So event handler is used to tell you exactly what is happening within uh, uh, this SSIS package. So these are the few terminology that we're going to come across. Now let's take a look here on uh, connection managers, right? We are going to be establishing connection managers in this class. Now, uh, a connection manager will have the name of the connection. For example, let's say I'm doing a connection to a SQL Server database installed locally on my computer. So the connection manager will be the name of the server if it's just a default instance or the name of the server and the instance name and the database name, right? For example, right? You can see here uh, the, the naming convention. Typically, you want to name them in that order for connection manager so that you can, you don't have to miss, let's say I'm doing connection to multiple SQL servers. Each connection that I establish to a particular database will have its connection manager. Let's say I have one instance of SQL server that has 10 databases and I need to establish connection to each one of these databases. I have to name all these co connection managers based on the instance name, the what is default or name, and then the database, right? So that at least I can always, because once the connection manager is created, you don't always have to recreate it each time you want to connect to that. So that is how uh, that is done. Now look at this typical data flow here. I just talked about the fact that there are tasks, there are precedents, there are control flows, and there are event handlers. Here is a typical example. You can see here, the data is moving from step one all the way to the load supplier, right? It moves from this, and then when it succeeds, it moves to step two. It succeeds a move here. And at this point here, we have an event handler. There's, if it succeeds, it goes this way. If it fails, it goes this way, right? And then you can see it keeps moving. So all these are tasks. These are different tasks. And you can label them based on what is happening on that task, right? And uh, and simply, the, the precedent constraint here just simply tells me, I'm setting a constraint here on this step three. If the constraint is true, it goes in this. If it fails the constraint, it goes to this, right? So all these are precedence constraint. And within an SSIS package, you can group certain tasks into what is called a container, right? Let's say I have a task where within the task, I need to move data from 1,000 different sources. I can group, and I'm, I want to make sure that before I move to, let's say I'm here, step three, this step three needs data from 1,000 different sources. And before I move to the next step, I need to make sure that this is completed because the data depends on, there's a, some kind of dependency on all the different sources. In that case, I will not want to have this data, these different sources or these different tasks independently. I will create what is called a container, put all of them inside and say, well, you can only move to step two if this container passes the validation. It therefore means that when the data reaches this container, it's going to keep routing and routing and routing until all the data from the 1,000 different sources now has been populated within the container, then I'll move to the next step, right? 
So we can call these kinds of things a container, right? So container can be used for organizing elements of a package. Right? Some containers have the ability to loop, right? So many different iterations over and over until the task completes before you move uh, to the next to the next phase, right? We know here on data flow, simply connect, showing you how data moves from one source to the next. This is what data flow is all about, right? And this could also be from different HTML sources, CSV sources, and so on. And in, in the entire business intelligence, because this is what we're going in right now, you understand that business intelligence relies on SSIS, SSRS, and SSAS, right? So what is it really all about? In SSIS, I am pulling data from different sources, transforming this data, and loading it to some kind of data warehouse. Then, now, this data, when it's in data warehouse, needs to be analyzed. So the SSAS will come into that data warehouse, pick up the data that was loaded, analyze the data, and then SSRS picks up the data that has been analyzed and report it, right? You see, it's a whole chain. So it's all this go together, right? We have data that's picked up, maybe through ETL process into data warehouse, it's analyzed in form of cubes, and then reporting comes in and reports the data and sends out the information, and then the, the business owners makes informed decisions at the end of this, right? So, so yes, will SQL Server be needed? Yes, SQL Server will be needed to do this project. So if you don't have an instance of SQL Server running on your computer, please, before you show up in the next class, make sure that you have it installed because you need SQL Server to do that. All right, now let's go ahead. The demonstration, I'm going to use the remaining time that I have right now and just show you overview, the interface, what are we going to be doing? How do we build packages? And in the next class, all we're going to do is we start straight up in building packages. And I'm expecting by next class, all of you have your systems ready and we'll go into building packages. We're going to build as many packages as you can think of. And then we'll use these packages and deploy them. I'll show you how to manage these packages in terms of migration in SQL Server. Uh, if, uh, you have a project that involves migration and the server has exercise packages. How do I change the environment variables? How do I make sure that the package run successfully in the next server? This is everything that we're going to do as far as this program is concerned, right? Okay, now, before I go to demo, let me see if I have any question. Any question? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Um, when you're done installing, the mine was done installing, and but when you open it, it, it doesn't show the black screen, but it shows also the option which I have to choose maybe to build a project or start a project or the Well, right now you don't have a project, right? You don't have a yeah, project. Yes. So we are going to create a first project. And once we create our first project, we're going to use that now to start installing our packages. So if you've done it successfully, you can just hold on there. And when we start going to demo, I'll show you exactly what to do. Yes, John, you have a question? John? John? Uh, um, so when I try, yes, can you yes. hear me, please? I can hear you now, go ahead. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can yes, hear I can me? hear you. Okay. All right, so when I try to install, uh, when I try to install SSIS, uh, what I see is repair, modify, uninstall, close. So I don't know, oh. the sounds like, uh, looks like uh, maybe our. Well, it means when you say install SSIS, what do you really mean? Share your. Okay, so what James was talking about recently is if you to feed that with your install the package successfully, uh, uh, you can go on extension, manage extensions. Connection to the server could not be a before an error. What is it? Click here. Okay. And then scroll down. And then you see integration service check with a green button. So as you learn, if there's anything, you see open Visual Studio Code. We had asked you to download Visual Studio Code. You could also download it through this format. Uh, but anything that you install, will show up here like this as installed, right? So there, you'll, as you learn more here, you're going to see that there are a lot of things that you're going to need from this. 
Uh, I don't want to bombard you with so much, but for now, that is exactly how you do it. Okay, so at this point now, we when you have this, I remember last time I told you about it, you can start a new project, right? You can create a new repository or open a file or open project from an existing code, right? You can clone a repository and so on, right? So right now we don't have any, we're just going to create a brand new project, right? We're creating a new project and uh, the project that we are creating, we are creating a integration service import wizard, if that's what you want to do, or integration services project. So this project may be used for building high performance data integration and workflow solution that can used to run as a catalog, including extraction, transformation, and load. This is a project that I want us to create. So we're going to create this one next and just call it here module one. Call it just called up that the project that you're module one SSIS underscore. Here we take. All right. That's just a project. Now watch, look what happens here. Let me change the name this order. It should be care we take, right? Underscore SSIS underscore module one, right? Okay, now that is the project name. This is where the project will be located in your computer. And this is the solution. Remember what I said? You only open the project from the solution. Now, if you don't want to have them on this location, you can literally change this location. So you can click here and maybe look for where you want it to go to. You may want to have a different so a location for this project and it will go there. I'm just leaving it on the default location for me, but you could literally just go here on your digs and then create a folder called um, SSIS Masterclass, for example, right? And select that folder. Now the solution will be saved on that. That's the solution name. That is a location, uh, place solution and project in the same directory. Yes, I want everything to be placed in the same directory and then just go ahead and create. doctor perfect we're in business right right now we have the interface we have everything ready and all i need to do right now is build my package right so uh you can watch a lot of videos here like sample videos here you can say my first ssis solution you can pick up this one here and see their tutorials online on uh, on how to create an ETL package, deploy ETL package. We're going to do all these different different things in our next class. You can also look at here control flow basics and data flow basics. Right, you click on it, it takes you to the link. Microsoft has a lot of books online on these things to show you how you can build control flows, right, and implement them and run them and see how it works out for you. So you can read more on this before the next class, guys, I need you to really read on control flow, data flows, on how to build these SSIS packages uh, for yourself. You can see here, there's a lot that you can do on this. We will not be able to cover most of this, but at least before you leave this training, I will have given you all the steps, the, the foundation that it needs, that you need to be able to kickstart a career in this field and be successful. All right, now let's just go through this interface. What, what are we seeing right in front of us, right? What are we seeing? We have just created a solution uh, a call here we take SSIS module one. And you can clearly see here, this here, every solution that we create, this is the solution that we create, has under the solution parameters, project parameters, connection managers, SSIS packages, parts, miscellaneous, link Azure resources. For example, Azure 
exercise integration runtime. Remember what I told you, integration runtime is already very, very integrated in all these things we're doing. And they will always have Azure storage, right? So these are the various things that you have under Solution Manager. So on the Visual Studio, you have a Solution Manager on your right, which gives you everything that you're working on, right? On the left side here, you have what is called Toolbox, SSIS Toolbox. And these toolbox are grouped into different things. For example, you always have like the favorite ones, things that you use most of the time. For example, data flow or an executes flow. Let's say I just want to build an SI package that executes an, a, a SQL Server, SQL Server statement. Any SQL Server statement that you know, you can get the SQL Server statement and build a package out of that. So we will start by building very, very simple packages, just like I want to run a select statement, select star from a particular database. I just, that's my package. You can build a package for that. I want to do a package that just do restore database. I can build. I can get a package that does com uh, backup, copy, restore. Like doing data refreshes. You can build them from this exercise packages. All those kinds of little, little packages that we will deal with, you can do that. So favorite tells you the things that you do on a regular basis. Now, the common ones here, for example, data flow. If I click on data flow, for example, right? All right, data flow, if I double click on it. Now it will open the data flow. Data flow always tells you data is flowing from one point to another. You can see here data flow, the arrow that points from one source to another. Now, if I double click on this data flow, it will need to know, okay, how do you want your data to flow, right? And you can clearly see here, it's already telling me source, and destination because well data must always flow from source to destination right if you go back to data flow here you always see the arrow pointing like that and then you go on this control flow tells you what you're supposed to do and the data flow now really gives you the entire package what is flowing from what to what right and then when you go back here you have execute tasks for example if i just click on execute tasks there are two ways you can do this you double click on something or you click and it drop. Let me click, let me close, close this, cancel this. So you can hold this and drag and drop, right? Or you just double click, all right? You just double click. For example, let's say I have a task and that task is supposed to do uh, execute, do execute statement uh, for me, like four different tasks. They're all going to execute things for me. Um, you can create different tasks and you can always rename them, right? Like for example, I double click on it and I can rename this, all right? I can say this task is select a star from table one, for example, or from, from instructor table, instructor table. So I already know that this is my task that I'm going to do. It's an execute task and it's going to, Set, do a select star from instructor table. You can rename all these different tasks, right? And then now you can set the precedent. How do I want it to go? From this, it should go to this table. And from this one, it should go to this guy first. You can just drag and drop, drag and drop. And from this guy, it goes to this, right? If you remember, guys, in the SQL Server training, where we did uh, maintenance plan, right? You remember this is maintenance plan? This is how maintenance plan used to look like? You would drag and drop things. Remember a maintenance plan. If you pay attention, maintenance plan SQL Server is an exercise package that you're building. So this is really how we're going to work on all this. And you're going to see here a uh, bulk insert. If I want to do a bulk insert, data profiling, execute package, process package, uh, and so on. And we have containers here. Uh, when you go into a data flow, for example, you have on the data flow, you, the, 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 the tools that are here are different, right? When data is already flowing, what can you do with data? Because in the control flow, you're just telling me data is moving from this point to this point, or I'm executing data, uh, a SQL Server starts that will pick data from this source. That's all I'm doing on control flow. But the data flow really tells you, what am I doing with the data? I'm moving from destination to source, and within the data, am I doing a conditional split, data conversion, derived columns, lookup, match, join, and so on. I can do that within the data flow. And of course, we are going to build all these different ones uh, as we start. Now, today, you can see every single time you open the solution, the first thing that opens is an exercise package. 
and it's always labeled as package.dtsx. You cannot change this extension. You make the package corrupted. So if you want to rename it, because I cannot just have package, because if I open the next one again, let's say open a new package, it will just open as package1.dtx. What does it mean by package one, package two? So I have to make sure that I always rename my packages to make sure it does what I'm doing. Maybe I say uh, uh, data load. I can say data load. Maybe that's what the first package does. It does a data load, right? And the second package, maybe I'm building a package that, that does uh, data refresh. For example, data underscore refresh. These are packages I'm building. Always make sure you maintain the extension. Yes, it's already open. I have to make sure that I renamed it so that it takes care of it. So right now I have two packages that are here, data load package and data refresh package, right? And I can always save this. So when I save this, this goes to my, what is called my solution. So I can later on close my exercise completely, right? I've closed my exercise completely and I can go back now on my, um, where did I keep that thing? I kept it in on the here. I can go back here and see there is a folder. This is the project. And inside the project, I have a solution, right? A solution. This is where you always, uh, the dot SLN is the one that you're going to open. So if I need to open the whole project, this is the one that I have to launch, right? These are the different packages. Remember, we had data uh, refresh and data load. Uh, and in the solution, so you have to open the solution and use Visual Studio to open the solution and then it opens back and then you can start developing your work. All right. Okay. Um, I will stop here, guys, for today. And then in our next class, we are going to go into really building these packages and really seeing how we can use these packages for workload and uh, and yeah. So your assignment before you leave today is to make sure that, first of all, that you have this environment set up completely. Secondly, I need you to watch more videos on how to build very simple exercise packages. See, my solution has opened and I can see my two packages are right there and so on, right? So I need you to watch videos on how to build very simple exercise packages. That's assignment number two. So assignment number one, make sure that you have the environment set up. That was the first project we did today. We set up our SSIS environment as ready for us to do deployment. Assignment number two, watch videos on how to build very simple SSIS packages. Assignment number three, make sure you have SQL Server, right? SQL Server 2022 or 2019 installed on your laptop, local laptop. We're not doing with VMs right now. It should be installed on your local laptop before you show up here next class. And then we're going to continue from there. All right. That was it for the assignment. Make sure you do it before you show up. And I want this class to be very, very lively, just the way it is like that. Congratulations to the huge attendance. We have about 100 plus people listening. There is huge impact to community. I'm, ha I'm happy that when we invest time on something like this, people do show interest and they do, do show up. That's also an encouraging factor for me and the entire team. Right. Thanks, guys, so much. I hope it was helpful at least the beginning, and I hope that you stay committed. I know that you need it anyway. I know you need this thing that I'm teaching you. So uh, so we will meet again next class. All right, let me stop the recording here. So this video will be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, Zeps, can you please uh, put our YouTube channel here on the link so that if anybody is not part of the YouTube channel, you can click and subscribe. And then when I upload this video, you will have it available. And then you can watch it, do the assignment before the next class. All right. Yes, I'll do that. No. Okay, thank you.